Hi there! Welcome to Palette University and the next episode in our Real Biologist Reacts series, reacting to the uh, art by Joshua Dunlop and all of these, uh, you know, realistic Pokemon uh, renditions that he does. So as always, uh, all of Joshua's socials will be linked down in the description. Please, please, please check those out and encourage and support Joshua in any way that you can so that he can keep putting out all of this incredible work. He's been putting out a couple new pieces uh, in between each of these things that I do. So there's always going to be new material for me to cover and that's awesome. So if you like what you see in these videos, please, please, please go check out all of Joshua on uh, uh, all of the social medias. So today and in the uh, other video this week, we're going to be talking about the EV line, uh, at least the ones in Generation 1, which uh, are the ones that Joshua has done so far. So today we're going to be talking about Eevee and Vaporeon. In the next episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Jolteon and Flareon. And so these Pokemon are kind of interesting. Uh, so if you're, if you're excited for learning some biology about some of these things, and it's very weird how... Because they superficially look like foxes, but like not, and they're just, they're like just ambiguous enough to be weird. So I'm really curious to to get into uh, how Joshua decided to, to depict them. So if you're excited for that, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below as you check out all of Joshua's socials. And while you're down there, why not subscribe? Anywho, into the actual content. So, Evie. So, to me, and as... You know, from Eevee's typical art, you know, right below my face here. Um, Eevee looks very, very fox-like. Um, you know, its its nose isn't quite as long as you would see. Um, I don't think I've talked about Vulpix on, in this series yet. I will eventually when, when Joshua decides to put out nine tails because he hasn't done that yet. He only has Vulpix out. Um, but if you go check out Joshua's art station page, you will see uh, in his rendition of Vulpix that it has a much longer rostrum, which is sort of the end part of the, the face, the, where the nose is, mostly. Whereas with Eevee, and as you'll see, you know, the, the three Eeveelutions in Generation 1, he didn't choose to do that, which I get because, uh, you know, Eevee's art doesn't have that, but that is what you would expect for a fox. And... I think the fox that is most closely that most closely resembles Eevee is the Fennec Fox, which we do have like an actual like Fennec Fox Pokemon in Fennekin. Um, but Fennec Foxes are known for having their giant ears, and that's sort of what just Eevee reminds me of. And Fennec Foxes do have a relatively shorter rostrum than do other foxes like a red fox, uh, but it's still a lot longer than you would see here. This looks much more, at least if you were to look at just the the snout slash rostrum, that looks very cat-like to me. And you'll see that that's kind of a general trend in, at least, you know, I haven't looked super closely at the evolutions. I sort of save my first reactions to when I actually record. Um, but from what I've seen, they do look like a weird blur between canine and feline. So I'm really curious to see, to, to sort of get through his thought process. Specifically like Evie's coat, this coat, um is looks very much like what what like some of like the fluffier cats i don't know any dogs that have like this kind of fluffy almost almost like a feathery texture of a coat um like like a down coat because uh, it looks incredibly incredibly soft especially like the tail um so i, I don't know like if i were to look at just the body i would say that that is probably a cat um you know, cats and dogs, especially in their in their limbs, when especially when they're covered in fur, it's a little hard to tell um, a, a cat from from a dog. the The main difference is when you look at their claws, because you know cats have the retractable claws, while dogs do not. They have permanently like extended claws. And on Eevee here, you can't see claws at all, which would imply to me that it is a cat. Um, but like I said, it's kind of ambiguous. So I, I'm not very familiar with like cat breeds. I know that there are lots of them. I'm just not that familiar with them. Um, maybe like a Himalayan cat with shorter, shorter hair um, and obviously a different color. But then you get to all the fluffy stuff around its neck. Yeah, so with the fluffy stuff around its neck. So when you see that in animals in the wild, that is frequently a sign of intraspecific competition, meaning that members of the same species will fight each other. Um, 
mostly you see it in like lions. Like the reason why lions have such a big mane is because um, that thick fur protects its its neck. You know, the most important part of its body um, from other male lions when they're fighting. Or slightly differently, uh, you can see it with like bison. So North American bison have uh, and. You can see a little bit in European bison, but not nearly as much. Um, but North American bison have very, very dense fur on like their first, their front half, basically. And so this hair probably serves as some form of uh, protection for when male bison attack each other. But they mostly, like, that fur wouldn't really do much against their horns. Um, so it's possible, it's more most likely used for uh, just like pushing through snow. Because, you know, their, their back legs aren't the ones pushing forward through big drifts of snow. So they want thicker fur on their front uh, front half. But it probably does serve some kind of function in uh, intraspecific competition as well. Um, whereas I don't think that would really be the case with Eevee. So Eevee, like, yeah, it does get the move bite. But in anything that I've seen of it, it's not like it's shown having these big teeth. Whereas lions have massive teeth especially their canine teeth which is weird because they're felines but whatever um so like big puncturing teeth which is what that fur protects against whereas if two eevee were to fight each other that fur just doesn't seem necessary around the neck because i feel like their skin and normal fur would be enough to protect against their own pretty small teeth so between this big poofy fur and the very like silky looking uh, fur on the rest of the body and also the background um, This looks very much like it's in somebody's house Potentially for actually. Yeah, this looks like a Christmas thing because these look like presents and then back here This kind of looks like a Christmas tree. So like the green is like the tree and then you see some stuff on the tree like ornaments This right here might be like tinsel on the tree or something. So yeah, this looks like a Christmas thing to me Oh, yeah, there's an ornament right here on the ground as well so Interesting choice, like, I mean, I guess Eevee is a very popular Pokemon, so I could see it potentially being given often as a, uh, like a Christmas gift or something, which don't, don't get people, <laughs> listen, stop buying animals for Christmas, animals are not toys, that's just a PSA, anywho, um, the ears are very much, um, canine, so, Whereas some canines do have really short ears, you know, wolves tend to have shorter ears. A lot of dogs do have bigger ears, as opposed to cats, which rely much, much more on sight to, to hunt. So their ears tend to be a little smaller. Um, definitely not to this extent. I'm sure that there is like a cat that has pretty big ears, but if you were to say, you know, in general, between cats and dogs, which have bigger ears, easily dogs. Um, and then also the the eyes. So if you look at eyes, and I talk about this in almost every video that I do of this series, if you look at the pupils on an animal, that can tell you a lot about what that animal does, specifically when it's awake. So if they're circular pupils like you have, where it's just a, a black circle that can get bigger or smaller depending on how much light there is, that is probably a diurnal animal or an animal that's awake during the day. Whereas if you have a, an animal that has vertical pupils that uh, get wider in low light to almost being circular, but then when there's a lot of light, they become just this little vertical sliver. That means the animal's either crepuscular, meaning that it's awake at like dawn and dusk, or nocturnal, awake at night. So uh, Eevee has circular pupils, which isn't uncommon in cats, but that's basically a function of how big the cat is. So in Almost every species of big cat, which are your your lions, your tigers, leopards, jaguars. Um, I don't actually know about like the leopards, like, or like clouded leopard, snow leopard. I don't know about the really specialized ones. Um, but they all have circular pupils because they're awake during the day. I mean, obviously they can do things at night. You see a lot of footage of lions doing things at night. But for the most part, they are active during the day. Um, whereas if you look at these smaller cats, such as things like ocelots, they are awake at night, which makes more sense. You know, if you're eating things like antelope, like a lion does, 
antelope are awake during the day, so it makes sense that you would be awake during the day if you eat them. Whereas things like ocelots eat a lot more rodents, which are mostly nocturnal. So if your food is nocturnal, you are going to be nocturnal. Whereas dogs are, I don't want to say all, because I don't know for sure about every species of dog. And, and by dog, I mean canine. Um, I, I can't think of a single species of canine that is nocturnal. Uh, there might be one, I don't know. Um, but the vast majority of them are diurnal, which would make sense. And especially with Eevee being so small, if it were more cat-like, it would definitely be... Um, I mean, well, think about your own house, house cat. They have vertical pupils because they're relatively small. Uh, and Eevee not being that much bigger than a house cat would probably also have uh, vertical pupils, which it doesn't, in, at least in this depiction. So from like here up, it is dog-like. And then from like here down, it is very cat-like. But then the mouth, the mouth looks sort of cat-like, sort of dog-like, kind of hard to tell. I would lean more toward cat-like. Um, but I guess that's just kind of Eevee. Like, I mean, all of the Eevee Lucians also have some mixed traits, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, this basically all of Eevee's aesthetic looks to me that this is like a domesticated animal, you know, and that there are different breeds. Obviously, there's no evidence for it because we only see the one form of Eevee. Um, I would have suspected that. I would have really liked to have seen, and this would have been a lot of work because you'd have to do all the evolutions as well, but like in a lowland form of Eevee, I think that would have been really cool. Um, but yeah, so far, I don't know. There's just a lot weird going on with Eevee. And so another thing is that like generally things that like live in colder temperatures have lots of fur, which makes sense. But you wouldn't have these giant ears if you lived in a cold climate because, because, um, you know, a great example of this is African versus Asian elephants. Uh, African elephants have these big ears that they will wave back and forth uh, when they need to cool down because they're basically just a bunch of surface area uh, for you to lose heat through. Uh, whereas Indian elephants live in cooler climates, not cold, but cooler, um, and their ears are significantly smaller because of it. So having thick fur, you're like, oh, maybe it just lives in like a colder climate, but that doesn't work with the bigger ears. So... A lot of this screams at me that, that that Eevee is selectively bred to be cute and fluffy. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much all I've got to say about Eevee. So I guess let's move on to Vaporeon. So I was very, very curious about how he was going to... What, what direction he was going to take Vaporeon. Because none of Vaporeon's art really depicts it as having fur. Even though it is supposed to be like a mammal... In, in quotes, because of, you know, Eevee. And I think most other Eeveelutions have pretty notable fur. You know, Flareon is notably also very fluffy. It's got, like, a collar and a big fluffy tail. Jolteon is, but, like, its its fur is, like, stiffened because of the electricity, even though that's not what electricity does. Um, you know, you look at a lot of the other ones, and they look generally kind of furry. But Vaporeon doesn't. Vaporeon looks like it would be, like, a fish. I don't know. Um... But here, you know, he chose to sort of do like a hybrid where you can see lots of very short fur, almost like otter-like fur is what this looks like to me. But then he gives it, you know, obviously he can't just take away an entire piece of Vaporeon's anatomy. So he gave it this, the, the like frill that Vaporeon has around its neck. And I really don't know what... I've, I've mentioned this a few times in that evolution doesn't, I shouldn't say doesn't, very rarely adds something new. It changes something that's already there to give it a new purpose. Um, so maybe this is just some very weird specialized fur. You know, maybe Eevee's neck fur um, hardens into something. Although this looks like it would be how Vaporeon breathes underwater, where this is just a very vascularized basically gill system but if if it were like modified hair that would not work um at least not i guess it could 
That's really tough. I that's 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 really tough for me to say. I would find that very unlikely. I would say it's not impossible, but very very unlikely that this would be made out of hair, or at least a hair like material like like a rhino's horn, and be able to be vascularized enough for proper uh, gas exchange to breathe underwater. Not impossible, but pretty unlikely. Um, I would think maybe these are also some kind of similar thing, although Vaporeon doesn't have any ears. So if these were made out of cartilage, at least the, the two on the sides, I don't know about the one in the middle, the two on the sides, uh, I could much more easily see ears being modified to be uh, super, super vascular, you know, having lots of blood vessels so that they could do oxygen exchange. More likely than the neck hair thing, but still a bit of a stretch. One thing that kind of surprised me about this is that he chose to give Vaporeon claws. Um, granted, they're quite small, uh, but they're there. And in Vaporeon's art, it does not have claws. So I, th I just thought that was a really interesting choice in that he very rarely decides to go or add something that's not there in the art. Um, you know, with the fur, it makes sense because every other evolution has hair or some kind of fur. Um, but I don't think any of them have claws. So I, I just thought that was a really interesting uh, design choice. And one that I, I personally agree with too. So Vaporeon has these ridges along its back that are supposed to like resemble like a fish's uh, dorsal fins. I could potentially see that being, that being hardened hair much more likely than like this being hardened hair. Um, just because there's quite a few animals that have hardened hair along their back, most notably things like hedgehogs, porcupines, their quills are just modified hair. So I could potentially see that, although I don't, granted hydrodynamics and like the physics in that are not at all, I know nothing about that. But I don't know how much just this little ridge would really affect its hydrodynamics. Cause what, what a fish's dorsal fin does is basically provide them with stability. So with fish, and you know, it works the same way in, in dolphins and whales and things that have one too, to a lesser extent, um, because of, the, of just the different mechanics and how fish versus whales swim. Um, but I, I really have a hard time thinking or imagining that this would have that much of a stability effect because fish are so like um laterally compressed so they're compressed like from the side as opposed to from the top and bottom down um so they're laterally compressed and because of that they can be kind of prone to tipping from side to side while they swim um so that's what their dorsal fin does is it keeps them straight whereas um with vaporeon vaporeon doesn't look any more laterally compressed than any other evolution so that i i don't think I don't know why you would need it, and also I don't know how much help it would provide being so small, and also just the mechanics of how it would swim. Because presumably, um, so the mammals at some point along the lines evolved from being specialized in side-to-side -side movement of their spine, because if you look at basically how any reptile moves, with the exception of, well I guess I was going to say crocodilians because when they walk they actually like pick themselves up. But when they swim, they very much do a side-to-side -side motion. But if you look at things like fish, fish basically just move their entire body side-to-side. -side. And uh, if you look at like salamanders, how they walk, they also do like a side-to-side -side thing. Whereas mammals, we change the way our spine and the musculature of our spine works. And that's of doing side-to-side, -side, we do forward and backward. Um, and, you know, that's why, you know, whale flukes, like their tail fin, tail fin is like horizontal while a shark's fin is vertical it's all up to that musculature that mammals changed along the lines and vaporeon has you know a horizontal tail like a whale uh as well so i would imagine that it uses kind of its whole body to swim but like just kind of tucks its its uh limbs in when it swims um and having this very short fur um also right here kind of looks a little oily in this spot looks like shiny and oily uh, which is, you know, otters and a lot of other aquatic mammals have some kind of oil in their fur to keep uh, keep water out, make them more streamlined, and also uh, keep them warm while they're in the water. 
So that'll that'll make sense to me. Okay, so then we get to the face. So with as with Eevee, it looks generally pretty cat-like, um, with the exception of the eyes. You know, the the snout does not look long enough to really be most dogs. And you know, I'm I'm completely putting aside domesticated dogs because we screwed them all up. <laughs> I'm looking at talk about purely wild dogs, and there used to be dogs in the past that are no longer around that were pretty brachycephalic or having very short faces um, but that's because what those dogs did was different than what our dogs did and that ecologically they're a lot more similar to cats in that they were most dogs today that are predators are long distance like just r chase whatever they're following until it cannot run anymore and then like like wolves are a great example of this where they can run and run and run forever um, whereas these other dogs in the past were much more ambush hunters and, uh, because they were a lot slower and a lot just physically bulkier, but they had shorter faces because, um, they're known as the borof borophagine dogs, which means bone eating dogs. So they had really short faces to give their, uh, molars more pressure. And so they would literally cr like crack open bones with their jaws, similar to, to what hyenas do. Um, I don't personally see the Eevee line as being, um, you know, borophagus or, or bone eating. So I don't know the purpose of why, if there's supposed to be some kind of canid, um, or, or dog relative, I don't know why they would have a shorter face. So I think it makes, makes more, generally more sense for them to be more feline. At least in the evolutions, tend to be more feline than EV does itself. All right, so that's going to wrap up this episode. Make sure to check out uh, the next episode coming out later in the week, where we talk about the other two Gen One evolutions, uh, Jolteon and Flareon, and talk about some of their anatomy and some of the weird things that I'm sure I'm going to find going on with them. Once again, please, please, please make sure to check out Joshua, Dun Joshua Dunlop and all of his socials. They will be linked, as always, as, as I said at the beginning, down in the description. I cannot stress enough how much you should support the, the great creative people in the Pokemon community who are making great pieces of art like this. Speaking of support, you can support me uh, quite a lot by following me on Twitter at palette underscore you to keep up on all things Pokemon science, as well as if you feel like our content is worthy of supporting this way, we do have a Patreon, the link to which will be down in the description as well. And with that, a massive shout out to our supporter over on Patreon, Patty Murphy. Thank you so much, as always. And thank you so much for watching, and as always, there's a time and place for everything.